Hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetty. We're here with you today. It is currently the 6th of August, 2014. The main topic, as you can see here on your screen, of course, is Typhoon Halong continuing the track off here towards the north. And as we go through the overnight hours here on Wednesday and a Thursday, the outer rain bands already starting to impact the Daito Jima Islands, actually just the Daito Islands out here just towards the east of Okinawa Hanto. If you are in Okinawa, this is you right here. These are the Daito Islands, and they're probably going to take the brunt of this storm system as we look ahead into Thursday and eventually over towards Friday, expecting typhoon strength winds on these islands, and it, it definitely going to be very rough for them. Now, there's about 5,000 people that live here. They're going to take the brunt of it, but as far as typhoons go, they're the veterans, and I think they're one of the most experienced people in the world that deal with this. So uh, this is just going to be a run-of-a-mill storm for them. Before I get into the update any more, though, I do want to talk about everything else going on across Japan today because we have been talking about some, well, just torrential rainfall across western Japan, not just uh, today, but also for the past week now, even back towards last week, we were talking about Nakri into parts of Shikoku, western Honshu, and Kyushu. Most recently today in Yamaha, Maguchi around the Iwakuni area. We've seen upwards about 120 millimeters at one location in an hour span. Needless to say, this resulted in flooding this landslide I'm showing you here. Uh, one man is still missing from that. Also in Hiroshima, heavy rainfall today. It was the memorials going on today for the 69th anniversary of the uh, atomic bombings there. And a lot of the events actually had to be canceled during the afternoon, the evening hours. So really a lot of this area, we're still talking about the heavy rainfall across western Japan. The main reason this is here actually is because we have this stationary boundary which is lingering just towards the north of Japan. It has nothing to do with how long. <clears throat> you'll have this long band of cloud cover right here. That's your stationary boundary. And it's been pumping in that moisture in from the southwest. And that's just been piling up on some of the mountainsides here. It's been resulting in flooding rains. Also farther towards the north, about 7,000 people have been told to evacuate out of Mori. A uh, heavy rainfall warning still in effect across parts of Hokkaido. And just to exasperate the situation, how long is en route? So I wanted to get that out of the way first before I talk about this update because it just puts in perspective how much rainfall has fell out here and any more that does occur is surely going to be resulting in not only flooding but landslides as well it's going to be a very serious situation uh, across parts of western japan before i talk about that i know a lot of you are watching from okinawa especially the u.s military out here and you're, you're worried about this storm system and you have a right to do so i mean take a look back at that satellite imagery just a second ago uh, as i mentioned that's you okinawa just towards the northwest of the center of circulation daito islands right there and the storm system is pretty close i know this looks pretty ominous but See that drier inflow? We have a lot of drier actually wrapping around the northern periphery of this, and that's even circulating into the core of the storm. It's going to cause it to do some weakening. It's also wrapping into the eye as well, and we've seen a lot of clearing into the eye. <clears throat> But on the western periphery of this storm system, it looks like it's going to be some gusty winds, some passing showers. But as far as you're concerned in Okinawa, uh, yeah, maybe tropical storm strength winds. Actually, the Japan Meteorological Agency has decreased their max intensity expected for Okinawa down to a rate around 38 knots. Um, with gust upwards about 45 to 50 knots. So they're expecting just barely tropical storm strength winds for a brief period of time as we look ahead into Thursday, likely early Friday morning, once our storm system passes towards the east of those of you here. So right here in this outlook, you can see this is the core of your winds. Right around that center of circulation, that's that tight eye wall. That will be moving over the Daito Islands. But as far as Okinawa is concerned, you have the outer rain bands. Now I'm not saying it's going to be a weak storm system here by any means and it's not going to be all sunshine but it is going to pick up in some breezy conditions and you are going to see some passing showers so right now jma does keep it well offshore as i mentioned 40 knot sustained winds i think the u.s military there is only expecting about 30 knots sustained as far as cadena is concerned and around naha especially areas away from the coastline that seems pretty accurate so it does look like the agencies <laughs> are con agreeing on something here finally all right so no pressures down to 955 they are expecting to maintain that intensity actually throughout the day today they expected to uh increase in intensity and 
It does look like it had a little burst of convection, but that's probably not going to be happening anymore. So JDWC actually expects a little increase, about five knots, before it dramatically weakens out once it runs on shore around Shikoku. Now, there is a big difference in the tracks here, and I do want to point this out. JDWC is kind of running more with the GFS model, and they're expecting our stationary boundary, remember I mentioned it's off here towards the north, to not have so much of an impact on this storm system pulling back towards the west. JMA and the other hand they've been seeing these rain showers out here they know this boundary is strong they're expecting it to kind of do what the ecmwf is saying that's on one of the models and pull across the amami island and then off there pushing into kagoshima i know this sounds trivial for some of you watching here and i mean that track compared to that track it, it doesn't seem like a lot but if you're out here in kagoshima or some of the islands this is a very major difference um, and it also could result if you have a storm system directly making landfall in Shikoku. That's worst case scenario. And there's going to be some very, very severe flooding going on here. So right now, this is our latest model run from the GFS. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this model does pull the storm system off there towards Shikoku. Once again, that would be kind of a bad situation for them. Worst case scenario, though, for the Amami Islands is our ECMWF, this model being overlaid here on the Meteor Earth app, and that pulls it across the Amami into Kagoshima. Like I said, either way, I... The winds are going to be a problem, but it's the rain, and exactly when and where is the biggest problem. So flooding uh, definitely is going to be an issue out here in Kyushu, Shikoku, even over towards Iwakuni, still a major threat. This entire area still has been seeing the rainfall, and unfortunately, as we take a look ahead in the forecast... Um, as I mentioned before, things aren't going to be improving. This storm system is just carrying an absurd amount of moisture with it, and that's going to be dropping a ton, an absurd amount of rainfall that has already occurred out here. You can see that big spin up, and look at all that moisture being wrapped in from the southwest monsoon, which has also been causing flooding in the Philippines, by the way. That whole river of moisture has just been training into this storm system so here's 96 rainfall actually 120 hour rainfall look just showing some areas here possibly 8 10 inches of rain this is based on the gfs forecast so we're definitely going to continue to keep you updated here at westernpacificweather.com uh as i mentioned before the big problem with this storm system is going to be the rainfall in western japan if you are out here in okinawa yes the winds are going to pick up it's going to be breezy but it, you're missing the bulk of the storm system. It's going to pass well to the east. This is why we say stay tuned. The forecast could change. Um, we are expecting it a little bit closer. Tropical storm strength winds. But now I'm really even backing off on that myself. I'm thinking max. Um, maybe 30 to 35 knots. So barely tropical storm strength winds out here for those of you across uh, Okinawa Hanto. Specifically the Amami Islands and Daito Islands, which are... Well, a Daito or part of Okinawa Prefecture, they're going to see those typhoon strength winds. All right, guys, that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. Before I let you go, I want to show you this. Um, tropics definitely firing up right now. We have not just Halong, but we have Bertha out there, um, Julio, Isel, and uh, Geneva. I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, that's a confusing one. Good news, uh, the models are actually showing uh, after this big sweep of storms we have right now, it's going to calm back off a little bit as we look ahead into next week and the week after. So uh, mid-August should be some quiet stuff out here. All right, stay safe out there.